two databases. Uh, today, we're going to follow up on uh, Monday's lecture. So on Monday, we talked about various ways of uh, modeling data. Now, today, we're going to talk about uh, various ways of querying data that has been uh, so modeled. Uh, in particular, we're going to focus on two things that uh, hopefully you've already been uh, exposed to somewhat by now. If not, uh, this is mainly here to catch you up a little bit. Um, SQL, uh, which I'm really hoping you had at least some exposure to, and relational algebra, which you may not have. So, once again, uh, last time we talked about uh, modeling your data. So, we talked about the entity relationship diagram, and we talked about how that can be used uh, to express uh, concepts, uh, specifically entities and how those entities are interconnected. Now, uh, SQL, uh, the first thing that we're going to be talking about today, is based on uh, a variant of this called the relational model. Um, this is an extremely common uh, way of encoding data, and it's one that's used by practically every major uh, database uh, system out there, um, DB2, SQL Server, Oracle. Um, now, it's not the only data model, and in fact, there's a number of uh, popular systems uh, that implement slightly different data models, uh, but it has the virtue of being extremely simple. Uh, and as it turns out, just about every other data model uh, can be expressed very neatly in terms of uh, the relational model. So as a starting point, we're going to use this uh, as a way of uh, essentially uh, teaching how these systems work. This it all boils down to the same basic set of concepts, uh, each of which are very neatly captured uh, by this particular model. And uh, really above all, it's just it's a really simple model. It's neat, elegant, and it captures a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, what is the relational model? Or more precisely, what is the database built on uh, the relational model? Well, loosely speaking, uh, loosely speaking, it is a set uh, it is uh, a relational database is a set of relations, each of which uh, is um, consists of a schema and an instance. Uh, the schema describes the data, as we talked about that. Uh, that is uh, that characterizes the structure of the data, uh, and the data itself uh, is expressed uh, as a set of uh, tuples or as rows uh, and columns. Each column uh, corresponds to an attribute. So recall on Monday we talked about entities having attributes, relations having attributes. Uh, every uh, column of a relation uh, had, or attribute of a relation um, corresponds to one of those, those attributes. Uh, we sometimes, uh, to introduce a bit of terminology, uh, the number of attributes or the number of columns uh, in a relation is referred to as the degree uh, or the arity of that relation. Um, as I said, the data also consists of a set of rows. So um, every row of the data uh, expresses uh, one entity or one relationship, or possibly a bit of both, depending on how you uh, translate uh, from the entity relationship model uh, to the relational model. Um, either way, the data consists of a set of rows, uh, each of which has a set of attributes, and uh, that is a typical uh, relation. A relational database consists of a set of relations of this form. And one last uh, bit of notation, uh, the number of rows in a relation is the relation's cardinality. Um, so once again, you can think of a relation as effectively a set of these rows, uh, and the rows are also sometimes referred to as tuples, a set of tuples. So to give you a concrete example, uh, here is a list of Starfleet officers as a relation. Uh, the relation is called officers, and it has three attributes, first name, last name, and ship, uh, and it has nine rows, each row corresponding to one entity. Uh, obviously, it has a cardinality of nine, nine rows, and it has an area of three, three columns, three attributes. Any questions so far? Good. All right. Um, so SQL is what's called the relational query language. Um, the relational model has uh, the virtue of being extremely simple. And because it's extremely simple, 
makes it very easy to express queries over that data. Um, SQL and practically every other uh, query language uh, that has been developed for, rela uh, for the relational model uh, is what's called declarative. Uh, that means that the query expresses what you're trying to compute rather than how you actually try and compute it. So if I give you a C program, I can iterate over the, the rows of this relation. I can manipulate the columns in, in uh, various ways. But the C program is going to give you a precise algorithm for computing what it is that you want to compute. Uh, in a declarative form, uh, a query, you tell, uh, the query is, uh, indicates what you're trying to obtain. It gives you a very high level goal uh, give the database a high level goal uh, that it can then figure out the best way of actually uh, computing. And in fact, there may be a number of different algorithms uh, that it can use to, to perform the computation that you're looking for. So, uh, getting to SQL itself, um, there have been, uh, SQL started out back in the 1970s uh, when IBM was developing a database system called System R, uh, to give you a little bit of history. Um, since then, it has evolved a number of different times, and the version of SQL that, we're now, that is now in active use was pretty much standardized in 1992, uh, 20 years ago. Um, the fact that it's still in use, almost in its present form uh, since then, uh, really says something about how, uh, how general purpose uh, it is, how generalizable it is. Uh, since then, a couple of uh, other additional features have been added, uh, but essentially the same uh, core structure uh, is the same thing that was around over 20 years ago. Uh, gener uh, general SQL query uh, consists of, uh, well, at the very least it consists of a select and then a target list. Um, the, uh, the target list consists of a set of values uh, to uh, query. Uh, additionally, you can have the from clause and the where clause. Uh, the from clause indicates a set of relations that you'd like to ask a question about. Um, so I'm, remember a database is a set of relations, I'm going to indicate uh, here a couple of relations that, refer, uh, that I'd like to ask a question about. Um, the target list, I'm going to include uh, a set of columns that I'd like as part of my result, and um, then at the very end, I also like to potentially filter out uh, some of those rows uh, so I can specify a condition over the columns as well uh, that indicates which rows uh, uh, There's an optional uh, distinct keyword that also can uh, eliminate rows that are, uh, that are duplicates of other rows. Um, this, uh, when talking about collections, we can talk about uh, two different general classes of collections. We can talk about sets, uh, which contain only one instance of a given value. We can talk about bags. And typically, by default, uh, SQL is going to use uh, bag semantics, which is to say uh, a result uh, bag can contain as many uh, results, uh, as many duplicates uh, as, are, as are actually produced. Um, in order to get set semantics, we would include this uh, distinct now, uh, from a very high level, uh, and this is sort of the most naive, inefficient, horrible uh, algorithm for computing a uh, select uh, query, uh, but naively what would happen is that you take uh, every relation that appears in the relation list, and for every value in one of those relations, uh, you pair it up with every value in uh, every other relation. You take all the values in relation one, pair it up with all of the values in relation two, repeat, and then for all of those values, you pair each one of them up with every value in relation three. This is what's known as the uh, Cartesian product of these uh, relations. Then you apply the condition, so you discard uh, all of the rows that fail the condition, and then any columns that don't appear in the target list uh, go away, uh, get projected away. Finally, if uh, you have the distinct keyword specified, uh, you eliminate duplicates. There's a slight variant of this uh, called unique, uh, which returns only tuples uh, that occur exactly once. Uh, it occurs two or more times, it gets deleted. Now, like 
like I said, this is uh, a correct way of interpreting a SQL statement. And in general, this is how you should think about, uh, from a very high level, when you're writing a query, this is how you should think uh, about a select statement. It is, however, uh, the least efficient strategy for actually evaluating that. And so what will typically happen in a database is that you have an optimizer that takes this query and rewrites it into a form uh, that can be evaluated much more efficiently, uh, but that still has the same exact semantics. So, so here's a question for you guys. Uh, I mentioned set and bag semantics. Why, what is the, the reason that you might think uh, SQL uses bag semantics by default? list of values, uh, what would the cost, if I had a list of values, uh, no organizational structure over it whatsoever, uh, what would the cost of eliminating uh, all of the duplicates be? Let's put it another way. How would I go about eliminating the duplicates? Yes? Okay. okay, so sort them, then iterate over the list, so n log n plus n, n log n. Um, yeah, and n log n is a pretty high cost if you're dealing with petabytes of data. Um, if you can get away with it, you don't want to uh, do deduplication, and so that's essentially why SQL uh, treats, that is the primary reason why uh, SQL uses tags uh, rather than sets. Okay, um, so Let's make this a little more concrete. Here's, a, uh, here's an example query. So I'd like all of the uh, officers, I have a table of all of the officers in Starfleet. I'd like all of the officers that are on USS Enterprise, ship 1701A. Uh, and in order to do that, I'll write this uh, query, it's, uh, select star from officers where ship equals the ship that I'm looking for. So let's get them. Iterating over all of the uh, tuples and officers, and I'm getting back uh, all of the tuples that match the particular uh, predicate, where star uh, denotes every single, uh, where star is meant to represent every single tuple in the given, uh, in the, the uh, in the inputs. I could also use officers dot star uh, to denote every single tuple just in the officer's relation. Now if I'm looking for uh, just some subset of columns, I can specify them uh, using the target list. So if I'm just looking for the first name and the last name, uh, I can do that by specifying select first name, last name from officers. All right, now I've described the general uh, evaluation what would you say in English? What would this query be trying to compute? Okay, so we return. Uh, so. Uh, Strictly speaking, correct, but could you describe what exactly the ship equals ID uh, predicate is, is doing there? Okay, 
So it's uh, you're, fun, you're trying to pair up every single officer with the corresponding ship, then find the location that the ship uh, is currently at. You're trying to find the first name and the last name of all of those officers. So in other words, looking for the first name and last name of every officer uh, who is on a ship located at Vulcan, which in this case is just everyone's favorite uh, answer. All right, um, one uh, extra little bit of nomenclature here. Um, you may have noticed that this is, uh, these, these uh, variables are a little bit, uh, can sometimes be a little bit ambiguous. So what you can do is refer to uh, the origin of a particular uh, variable that appears in a target list. So if I'm looking for the first name and last name of officers located at Vulcan, I can explicitly say that I'm looking for officers.first name, officers.last name, where officers.ship equals ship ID and ship location uh, is a full. Now that's a little bit verbose, so what I can also do is uh, shorten those names. Um, I can create an alias uh, for every single uh, relation that appears in my, my from list. And I can use that alias in order to uh, save myself a bit of typing and usually make the, the query a little more readable. Yes? Uh, what is the meaning of uh, realm of um, So the from, uh, the way that you treat from, you take every single, uh, every single relation that appears in the, the relation list and you compute what's called the, the Cartesian product. So I'm going to take the first tuple of the first relation, pair it up with every tuple of the second relation. And that's going to be part of my output. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the second tuple. And all of those are going to be part of my output. And repeat the process. But uh, in this case, you'll note that there's this, this predicate, o.ship equals s.id. So that uh, when I, when I pull, pair up uh, the officer with all of the ships, there's only going to be one ship that actually successfully pairs with it and appears in the output. And this is what's referred to as a join. Does that answer your question? Um, so just to, in general, this uh, kind of um, annotation is uh, is good. It makes your, your queries a lot readable, a lot more readable, and I encourage you to uh, to use it. All right. So a little bit more. Uh, target lists can contain um, a couple of different uh, additional um, things. Uh, other so you can perform computations in the target list. You can uh, define an expression that computes some value, such as uh, twenty percent of an officer's age. Now, uh, it is often handy to be able to uh, refer to these, these expressions by name, so you can name them uh, using equals or as, uh, like is highlighted. <coughs> Questions so far? Great. SQL also supports uh, a variety of data types, uh, one of which is uh, strings, and a lot of, uh, a lot of early work was done predominantly on strings. Um, one quick thing to note here uh, is that SQL uses single quotes for string literals. Um, if you use double quotes, you'll generally run into errors because it means something quite different. Um, and probably one of the most common uh, string manipulations that you'll encounter, string uh, accessors that you'll encounter, is the like predicate. So you can do uh, string equals other string, but you can also do a uh, string like string, um, where uh, the percent sign is used to identify uh, essentially a wild card. Uh, so it can be as many characters as you like um, will we'll be matched by a percent sign. Uh, if you're familiar with regex, uh, this is essentially dot star. There's another wild card which matches exactly one character, underscore, uh, and that is kind of like the regex dot. Any questions? All right, um, 
So we talked about taking two relations and combining them together, joining them together. Uh, there's another way to take two relations and combine them together, uh, which is union. Uh, so every relation, like I said earlier, uh, is a set or bag of values. And uh, SQL provides uh, a union operation, which computes the set or bag uh, union of two relations. So uh, in this case, I'm trying to find, I'd like to find uh, the, the tuples where uh, the last name of the officer is Kirk and the tuples where the last name of the officer is Picard, and I want to uh, create a single relation uh, that combines both of them. And note, by the way, that uh, there's a nice tight coupling between that, uh, union and or. So uh, those two queries are actually going to compute exactly the same thing. Questions? So, um, yes? What is the actual difference between these two and uh, they are precisely identical? There is no difference between using C and C. That depends on the database engine that you're using. Um, they are equivalent queries, and an intelligent uh, optimizer will uh, be able to switch back and forth between them and presumably identify the one that's going to be more efficient. Um, that's not always going to be the case, uh, as you'll see with checkpoint, project checkpoint two, uh, there is a limited scope of optimizations that can be feasibly implemented. Um, so the answer to your question, uh, which is, are those two, uh, just to repeat the question, uh, it's, are the two uh, queries equally efficient? Uh, the answer is yes and no. And the, which of those it, it is depends on how intelligent your optimizer is. Does that address your question? Anything else? All right. All right. Um, so a similar, oh, uh, one other thing for union. Um, one other thing for union. Um, the two queries that you uh, union have to be what's called union compatible. In other words, their schemas have to be the same. So if I combine a set of officers uh, which has a first name and a last name with a set of officers that just has a first name, uh, the, uh, the evaluator doesn't know uh, what to do with that last name column uh, for, for the second set. So it's just going to flat out disallow that query. So they have to have the same scheme. Now there's a similar query here, uh, which is called accept. Uh, any thoughts on what this might do? Uh, I heard someone speak up. Set difference, yes. So you're going to take all of the tuples that appear in the first result set and remove uh, the tuples that appear in the second set. One final union compatible query, and that's called intersect. Any thoughts on what this on what this does? Uh, Hannah, are you good? Yes, you back. Yes, tuples that appear in one set and the other set. Now, um, this is officially part of SQL 92, but it's one that is not implemented uh, pretty, it's not commonly implemented. Uh, a lot of open source uh, database systems don't actually support this. But that's okay. How would you express the same query uh, if you wanted to uh, write it in a database system that didn't support the intercept? Can I get a hand?
high level. What is this query trying to compute? Yes, so a list of officers who visited both Vulcan and Andoria. So what are you looking for? Uh, yes? Uh, so you take the first query, 
subtract the second query, and then subtract that whole thing uh, from the first query. Actually, yeah, sorry, that, that will compute everything. Um, good. Uh, there's a couple of other strategies. Yes? Could you speak up a little bit? I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, I'm not sure, but for every instance, uh, two instances of uh, each table. Okay. Uh, so, uh, compute uh, over the average equal to V1 of the over the average equal to V1 of the and over the average equal to over the average, and V1 of the average equal to V1 of the and V1 of the average equal to V1 of the average. Okay, so strategy one, you can use accept. Strategy two, uh, you can instantiate two copies of the visited table. So you want one tuple uh, where um, the one tuple in visited uh, where the officer is in on Vulcan, and the visited uh, where the officer is on Andoria. Uh, and then you can combine those two with a join. Good, so that's the second strategy. Um, and the third one uh, that was mentioned in, in fact, my next slide. Um, so there's a third strategy, uh, which is to use, um, or, well, a variant of this. Uh, there is an, another uh, predicate called in. And so we'll, we'll note that every single select statement computes a bag of results, or uh, a list of results. Um, now, if that list of results has only one attribute, what you can do is test for membership in that particular attribute. So you can use, um, so what this query says is, give me an officer that is in the set of all officers that have visited uh, planet Vulcan. Uh, just to restate this, um, the in, the, the, the nested uh, subquery inside an in has to have exactly one attribute, because otherwise uh, the engine doesn't know which attribute you're testing. Uh, there is a, similarly, a not in, which tests for the inverse. Any questions on how in works? Yes? Exactly. Yes. 
So unique is going to give us uh, instances. Uh, unique is going to give us uh, every tuple that occurs exactly once. So every officer that appears exactly once in the visited table um, is going to appear in there. And we're looking for um, OIDs that appear. Um, we're looking for every instance of that particular OID in the relation uh, the OID of the outer officer. So we're basically looking for all officers that have visited exactly one planet. Now here's another, uh, another variant on this. Why is it B.officer uh, in the target list rather than star? So what would happen if I had a star there? Okay, so multiple visits to different planets would be unique. Yeah, so in that case you'd be asking uh, which officer has never visited the same planet more than once. Good. Um, okay, so each of these operators have uh, counterparts. In has not in, exists has not exists, and unique has not unique. Uh, one more set operator, uh, which is all and any. Two more. Um, what do you think this computes? Select star from officers O, where O dot rank greater than all query. Yes. Higher than every single officer on the Enterprise. Yes. Uh, so, uh, once again, uh, I'm picking the rank of every single officer on the Enterprise, and then greater than all, and then something that computes a list, is going to return true if and only if uh, the value is greater than all of those values. Similarly, greater than any is going to return true if, uh, if the value is greater than any of those values. You can similarly, similarly use this uh, for equals any, uh, equals all, uh, and so forth. Any questions so far? All right. Now, uh, we talked about nesting queries um, inside these special uh, predicate operations, uh, you can also nest queries inside the from clause. Uh, so something to observe is that the, every single query returns uh, a relation. So it has, uh, every sim single query has a schema. So everything in, it, in the target list, uh, everything in the target list defines the schema of uh, the, the select queries relation. And the rows are obviously the, the results set. So anywhere that you can, uh, you can use a normal relation, you can use a parenthesized query as well. Um, the caveat, uh, queries need to have names explicitly given to them if they appear in the front clause, simply because uh, there's no default way of constructing uh, a name for them. All right, so uh, SQL is really good at taking multiple data sets and combining them together. Uh, one other thing that it's good at is summarizing data, uh, combining it into a smaller, more easily manageable, uh, more easily understandable forms. So here's uh, another query. What would you say that this query commutes? Number of officers on the enterprise, yep. Um, and so it's essentially taking uh, the result set and it's Compact, it's uh, computing a value uh, depending on all of those, those tuples. And there's a couple of these operators. Uh, count, sum, 
average, min and max are by far the uh, most common, uh, but you'll see a number of other statistical properties uh, like mean, um, mean mode, uh, some of the higher moments like st uh, standard deviation variance. Um, but these, these are pretty much the, the most common ones. Um, for count, uh, sum and average, you can also include uh, the distinct operator in there, which will do deduplication before you start summing things up. Any questions on aggregate, aggregates? All right. Here's a, uh, here's a quick uh, group exercise. So that query we asked, uh, we talked about a couple of slides ago. Uh, could you write this query potentially without uh, uh, without resorting to all. Turn to your two to three, your right neighbors, let's have a uh, chat for about two minutes. Everyone 
group them by the name of the ship that they're on, and then take the average of every age in one of those groups. And so this allows us to apply an aggregate uh, to uh, batches of tuples and get a, a set of results uh, back as part of the results. Uh, so this introduces two additional optional clauses to a select statement, a group by clause and a having clause. Group by indicates a set of columns that define your groups. So this can be one or more columns, and this is uh, pretty much the same, gonna operate pretty much the same way that distinct does. It's going to uh, deduplicate on each of those uh, on each of those columns, but rather than giving you uh, just one unique value, it then lets you apply aggregates uh, to the result set. Um, after that, there is a having clause which is kind of like a where clause, but it's applied after uh, the aggregation is performed. So any questions on this? Great. All right. Um, one additional caveat to, to note here, uh, the targets that appear in the target list have to be a subset of uh, the columns that appear in, in grouping. Uh, the grouping list. Uh, you don't have to have every column uh, in the grouping list and the target list, but every column that appears in the target list uh, must either be an aggregate or must be a, a, a group by uh, column. Uh, so once again, the condition, uh, the regular where clause is applied before grouping, um, so that can affect the aggregate values, while uh, the having condition uh, is applied after grouping, so that can reference Uh, 
be. That's almost true. What, is, uh, what do you mean by ignore? Like, not included in the results. Not included in the results. That is 90% true. Um, so what's what SQL has is what's known as a, a sort of free-valued logic. Um, in addition to uh, a Boolean value being true or false, you can actually have a Boolean value that is just flat out unknown. Now, 90% of the time, this is completely indistinguishable uh, from what you just said. Uh, the tuple will not be included in the results set. Um, there's actually a slight distinction here. So if there's, um, if the expression evaluates to uh, true. Uh, if O dot rank is null, the result of that comparison uh, is unknown, which means it could be either true or false. We just don't know. Uh, but where this gets a little weird uh, is when you combine it with Boolean predicates. So what happens if I have uh, let's say unknown and true. What does that evaluate to? False. So if I uh, if I'm comparing some unknown value to uh, a value I know to be true, what what could the result be? Unknown. Good. Uh, what about or? If I'm comparing an unknown value to a value I know to be true, true. Exactly. So. Uh, Boolean algebra works a little bit differently uh, with unknowns, but yes, 90% of the time uh, it'll essentially get silently discarded. So uh, this is more sort of general advice when writing SQL queries. Um, pay close attention when null values are involved. All right, uh, one. Um, one thing that I'm going to blast through very quickly. Um, SQL also allows you to define relations. Um, it essentially allows you to specify the uh, schema of a relation as well as its name um, using the create table statement. There's a whole mess of additional operations uh, that you can use uh, to manipulate these. Um, you can delete relations, you can modify relations. Um, really, uh, <coughs> really not expecting you to memorize all of this. Uh, but there's, there's boatloads of references on the internet. Um, if you're, uh, just be aware that this, this stuff exists. There's, uh, you can insert values, uh, you can uh, delete values. Uh, note that the, the deletions, you have to identify tuples using a predicate. So if, I, uh, if I'd like to delete a specific row, I need to identify that uh, row by a unique value. Um, let's skip this. All right. Um, so, just to uh, summarize here, SQL um, is a really, really powerful language uh, for querying uh, data. Um, it uses the relational model, and it has uh, the idea behind SQL is that it's declarative. Uh, you specify what you want, uh, not necessarily how to compute it. Um, obviously, there are some uh, cases where you might want to specify something in a particular way uh, because the optimizer is not going to be smart enough to figure it out. But at least conceptually, uh, the idea is that you specify what you want and the system figures out the most efficient way uh, of computing it. Now, SQL is reasonably nice for humans to work with. Uh, it's a great way to express um, express concepts, and it gives you a nice structured representation of the query. Um, structured, but reasonably concise. Um, but there's um, the, the underlying system needs something a little more general. Uh, SQL has a huge number of uh, different corner cases that it has to deal with. There's a lot of outliers, and as you'll quickly realize in, um, when you're doing checkpoint uh, project checkpoint one, uh, there's 
actually, SQL is, is not a pretty language uh, for the implementer. So what, um, we, what um, database uh, researchers and database implementers have done uh, is to develop a set of more concise, uh, more standardized, uh, more structurally simple uh, concepts, uh, query languages, that are equivalent to SQL. And one of these uh, that we're going to be talking about today is uh, relational algebra. Um, this is a really nice way of expressing uh, the, the, the sort of pro uh, the, the general approach uh, to evaluating a, a uh, to evaluating uh, an expression. Um, it is it essentially express a relational algebra tree expresses very precisely um, how uh, a query is computed, but at the same time has a very pretty set of equivalencies that allow you to easily restructure it, uh, easily identify equivalent forms of the same query that might have different uh, performance characteristics. There's also another uh, one that's fairly frequently used called relational calculus. Um, it is much easier to uh, when you're sort of specifying high-level goals, uh, but it's also quite a bit more complex, so we'll probably get to it uh, towards the end of the term. So for now, we're going to be focusing on uh, relational algebra. So like SQL, in relational algebra, a query is applied uh, to a relation. Uh, sorry, a uh, query is applied to one or more uh, relations. Each of these relations has a certain schema associated with it, like SQL, uh, and the query is itself uh, a relation, so you can nest queries very easily. You can apply one query to the output of another uh, very easily. Uh, so uh, there are a number of different uh, ways to, um, the, in relational algebra, kind of like in SQL, uh, you need to be able to refer to the attributes of a relation. Um, relational algebra uh, also sometimes uses uh, field notation. So you'll sometimes refer to uh, field number one, field number two, uh, as well as referring to them by name. Um, typically when working in class, we refer to uh, things by their name since it's more readable, but oftentimes when you're sort of trying to uh, analyze something that may make sense to work with uh, position identifiers, uh, just because it's more efficient. Now, SQL actually uh, supports both of these notations. All right, so we're going to be uh, discussing a couple of different uh, queries. And just to give you a uh, sort of high level picture, uh, just to give you a high level picture of how I'm going to be uh, illustrating these, here's a couple of relations. I have a table of captains, I have a table of, of first officers, and I have a table of ship locations. Um, captains and officers have first name, last name, rank, and ship. The locations uh, all have ship and location. <sighs> and my phone doesn't have the right one. Okay, um, so while selection, selection, the selection operator seems to have been abducted by aliens, <laughs> normally what it is is a sigma, a lowercase uh, sigma. Um, so their relational algebra has five basic operations. Uh, selection, represented by a sigma. Projection, represented by a chi cross product represented by a times, uh, set difference represented by a minus, the union represented by a big U, or uh, sometimes referred to as a um, The selection operator, kind of like the uh, where uh, clause of a select statement, identifies a subset of the rows in an input relation. Uh, the projection operation, kind of like the target list, projects away a set of, uh, of attributes, or potentially constructs a set of new attributes uh, using expressions. 
Uh, the cross product is kind of like the uh, from clause. It will compute the, uh, it will pair every input in one relation up with every uh, row of another relation. And the set difference and union uh, work pretty much like you'd expect. Uh, there's a couple of others, intersection, join, division, and renaming, uh, which are not essential, uh, but can potentially be uh, useful. One very nice thing about relational algebra is that all of these operators, like I said, uh, take relations as inputs, but they also produce relations as outputs. Uh, in, a sense, in essence, uh, the, the common term for this is that relational algebra is closed. A relational algebra expression uh, produces the same type of outputs uh, that it takes as inputs, which in turn means that operations can be composed uh, and you can come up with this nice, pretty set of equivalencies that allow you to rewrite relational algebra expressions uh, while preserving your semantics. All right, so let's quickly go over these uh, operations. Uh, projection, kind of like the target list, is going to project out a set of attributes. Just to recall, uh, this is the Kalkin's relation so if I run a projection on it, I get back the uh, specific, um, the, the last name and the uh, ship of each of the captains. If I do the same thing for the first, uh, if I can keep the rank of all of the first officers, I get two outputs here, in this case, uh, rank 2.5 and rank 3. Now why is this a little bit weird? Got rid of the duplicates, yes. So unlike SQL, typically in relational algebra, the assumption is that you're working with sets. Um, this is a bit of a difference, uh, so be aware of it. Um, there is also something known as bag relational algebra, which works on bags. Sets, by the way, are just much more easy to work with. All right, so what would the schema be of this particular relation? Come on, this, this is Thank you. Last name and ship, perfect. <laughs> and those aliens, all right. Um, so just imagine each of those to be a uh, lowercase sigma. I apologize. I'll, uh, of a, a brief chat with the grades after this. Um, all right, so if I were to select out from the captain's table every captain that has a rank less than 3.5, uh, this is essentially going to work very much like the where clause. I have a selection, then as a subscript, I have a uh, predicate, that predicate gets applied, and I get back every single uh, row that satisfies that particular predicate. I can also compose these. I can compose projection with selection, and I can get effectively select last name from captains where rank is greater than 3.5. Any questions so far? What's the scheme? 
scheme of the output? Same as the input. Yep. All right, cross product. Now this is sort of a visualization of um, what's what could potentially be happening under the hood uh, with a selection predicate. Um, in fact, this is uh, this is that comma uh, that appears in select. Um, this is going to pair up every first officer with every ship location. Um, so, once again, you can see Spock has been paired with every other ship. Riker has been paired with every other ship. Kira has been paired with every other ship, and so forth. Now, uh, what is the schema of this result? Yes, so it's all of the fields of the first and all of the fields of the second concatenated. Uh, you'll note, by the way, that sometimes these uh, schemas are going to be a little bit ambiguous. For example, here you have two different instances of the ship attribute. And that's why typically uh, it is common to use positional notation uh, when reasoning about these. So there's also an operator called the renaming operator, which takes all of the uh, attributes and assigns them a new name. So for example, what I can do here uh, is name, is have an officer ship and an L ship, uh, location ship um, attribute. And that's uh, de uh, denoted by the row. Uh, <coughs> uh, now, frequently, you can also take the cross product you can combine it with selection. This is uh, typically what happens. Uh, so once again, our aliens show up and abduct the vast majority of the outcomes. Um, in this case, we want to uh, find the officers that appear in both columns four and five, both of which are ship. Um, in other words, we want to pair up every first officer with their ship, with their corresponding ship. Now this particular pattern occurs frequently enough that it actually got its own symbol, um, this little bow tie thingy, um, which represents uh, what's called a join. And just like, um, just like we have certain conditions that apply to a uh, join in a selection, uh, in a select statement, here we also have a set of, uh, we can provide a, a condition to join over. So for example, I can find every first officer that has a rank lower than uh, at least uh, every first off every pair of first officer and captain where the first officer has a lower rank than the captain. Um, note, by the way, that in general, uh, these joins are basically just selection, uh, a selection predicate uh, combined with a um, with a pro uh, cross product, and as a consequence, this, um, the schema is, is going to look very much like a pro cross product, and while there will be fewer tuples in the results, uh, there won't be that many fewer. Um, so these are typically called uh, theta joints, where you have a condition that is sometimes referred to by the Greek letter uh, theta. Um, more frequently, you're going to encounter joins where uh, what you're testing is an equality frame. I'd like to match this tuple in, uh, to exactly one tuple uh, of this relation. Um, these are called equijoins. Uh, typically in the context of these, it's, uh, it is customary to simply remove the duplicate field um, if you have equality frames. Two fields are guaranteed to be equal. So that's uh, it, the shorthand for that is that you can just write uh, join with a subscript of the field that you're joining on. Now, if it turns out that this is uh, that this field occurs uh, that this field has the same sorry, if it turns out that all of the fields that you're trying to join on have the same name and occur in both relations. Um, you can just omit the subscripts entirely, and this is referred to as a natural join. A natural join is going to take every field that has uh, every field of the first relation and do an equi join with all fields uh, with the 
same name in the other one. Uh, please email either myself or uh, the project. 